Hey everybody, in this video we are going to talk about where voltage should be and where it should not be and a little bit of diagnostics on a hand-drawn circuit here. Um, uh, in my other videos, I'm, I, I talked about uh, similar stuff in a relay circuit. Um, if you didn't watch those yet, then uh, I'll show you on a circuit and then you can watch the relay videos and hopefully it makes more sense or vice versa. Hopefully they clarify each other. But right now I want to talk about where should voltage be, where should voltage not be, and then we'll get into what it looks like when we have uh, faults. So as our circuit lies, I, I made just a simple circuit here. Uh, we've got 12 volts coming from our battery. Here's our circuit protection, our fuse, our switch, uh, and then we've got a light bulb and then a path to ground, right? So this is just a simple circuit. Right now, it's important to know the difference between available voltage and voltage drop. Um, so right off the bat, let me just go through the circuit. We know that I should have voltage going to my fuse. My fuse is not doing any work, so I should have voltage that goes through my fuse, no problem. Um, and then I should have voltage that goes to my switch. My switch is simply a conductor uh, that opens and closes, so I should have voltage going through my switch with minimal drop. And I say minimal um, because in real life, it is quite normal to have a little bit of voltage drop. On your power side, you really shouldn't be seeing more than half a volt drop up to your load um, or on the positive side. On the negative side, it's around 0.2 volts um, for a voltage drop. So I am gonna have voltage coming from my switch up to my load and hopefully we haven't dropped more than half a volt at this point. If you have, then you're gonna run into some issues. Um, I'll talk about in a few minutes here. Now we know that um, I like to put a blue box around whatever my load is, that way my brain knows that that is what's supposed to use up voltage. That is what's supposed to. Um, if anything else is not, then, uh, or if anything else is using voltage, then I know that that's a problem. Now from there, I like to use either red or pink for power, um, and we'll get more into this when I tr uh, show you the video on how to trace wiring diagrams. Um, but I like to use red or pink for power and then uh, green for ground. Um, most of your diagrams are actually black, so using black for ground um, can get a little bit confusing. My load, since it has a blue box around it, I know is gonna use up all the voltage in the circuit. So I know that afterward, that whole section is my path to ground. I'm not going to be using up any voltage uh, from there because I don't have any left. I'm not even allowed to have any left to go back to the battery. Sort of goes against physics, right? So uh, at this point, now we know where voltage should be. If my switch is closed, if my switch is open, let's say we are in the open position, meaning the switch, and now I'm looking in the video, yeah. Uh, the switch is open, meaning you have not closed it. Uh, you have not pressed on the horn button. You have not pressed on your brake pedal to turn on your brake lights. You have not turned your headlight switch on. Whatever it might be, the switch is open. What that tells me, and well, and now I'm getting ahead of myself here. Let me back up, and this is where I would edit it out, but I don't know how to edit, so just bear with me here. Let me back up here. Let's go back to our switch being closed again just like I, everything was, just like we talked about. I wanna do a few voltage tests just to show you what that looks like. So right off the bat, if I wanted to do, let's do available voltage first. If I wanted to know how much voltage was coming out into my fuse, I would do an available voltage test and I would see 12 volts, right? Now we know that my fuse is not doing any work Actually, let's do this here. I know my fuse is not doing any work, so let's test voltage coming into the switch. Under normal operation, I should see 12 volts. And then from my conductor from my switch to my load shouldn't be doing any work. So again, all the way up to my load, I should see 12 volts. Now I know that I can't have any voltage coming back to my battery and I know that my light bulb, if it's emitting light, is using up all the voltage, so I know that after I should have, under normal operation, zero volts. That's as long as everything is working properly. Those are what your available voltage tests would look like. Now I'm going to erase some of these because I wanna do voltage drop. I want you to know what you should see 
if you're hooking up the meter in a voltage drop scenario. I'm gonna leave my available voltage test there for 12 volts to remind us that we have 12 volts going into the fuse. A voltage drop across, now remember, um, if you watch the relay videos, voltmeters simply tell you the difference between the first lead and the second lead, that's it. So if I'm hooking up an avail available voltage uh, test, then my ground lead is always gonna see zero volts and wherever I'm poking at is always going to see whatever voltage and compare that to my zero volts and that's what I'm gonna see. If I hook it up in a voltage drop scenario, it is going to tell me the difference between this point and this point, that's it. So if I have 12 volts coming in and 12 volts coming out, the difference between 12 and 12, that's zero, right? So I am going to see, I should see if everything's working properly, if I do a voltage drop across my fuse, zero volts. Now this is where a lot of people would get confused and they're like, oh, zero volts, that's the problem, right? The fuse must be blown. Actually, if the fuse was blown, I would show 12 volts. So keep that in mind. Because if I see 12 volts here, I know that I have 12 volts coming in and zero volts coming out. The difference between zero and 12 is gonna be 12. So if I see a 12 volt drop, voltage drop is showing whatever amount of voltage is dropping between the two leads. So I should not see a 12 volt drop across my fuse. If I do, then the fuse is the problem. So I should see zero volt drop across my fuse. Now with my switch closed, if I do a voltage drop test, I should have no voltage drop, right? It shouldn't be using up any voltage. So I should see zero volts if it's actually acting normal and I know that there's 12 volts coming in. That's why I like available voltage tests a little bit more because they do tend to tell you um, a little, at least know that you have voltage coming in because I might have zero volts because I've got zero coming in and zero coming out and that can get confusing. So make sure you have 12 volts coming in and then if I do a voltage drop across my switch with it closed, I should see zero volts. Now if I open up my switch, that changes things. If I open up my switch, I now have 12 volts coming in and nothing coming out because now I have no continuity. So that will be 12 in, zero out, the difference between 12 and zero. If my switch is open, I will see a 12 volt drop. If my switch is closed, I should see a zero volt drop. In this case, if I saw two volts, I know that my switch has some corrosion or a bad connection inside, which is not uncommon. So that's something to think about um, and that's where doing a voltage drop might be, be helpful for you. Not that you couldn't figure it out with an available voltage, but kind of does the math for you. It's basic math, but. So I should see with my switch closed, we'll keep it closed here, zero volts. Now at this point, I should, if I'm gonna do a voltage drop across my load, I know that I've got 12 volts going through here, zero volt drop, so that means I still have 12 volts going through here. So I should have 12 volts going into my load. As long as everything's working properly and my light bulb is emitting, I should see 12 volts. If I see, if, again, customers don't come in because things work properly. If my light bulb is not emitting light, there's two things that can happen. If I know I've got 12 volts coming into my light bulb, let's say we do an available voltage test, and I've got 12 volts coming into my light bulb, but my light bulb is not emitting light. One of two problems. I either have, and they're both gonna be opens here, I either have a bad ground, meaning no connection to ground, no continuity, or I have a bad light bulb either a bad filament or, or a bad connection inside. How do you tell the difference? This test right here. Now, I'll branch off, I'll explain here in, in a minute. If I see a zero volt drop, and I know I've got 12 volts coming in, that's a problem, because that means I have 12 volts coming out. And I know that it's not coming back to my battery, right? So I know this because no wires are burnt up. Um, and my light bulb is not emitting light. 
If I have a zero volt drop, that means whatever, anywhere from here to ground is going to be faulty, either a broken wire or maybe you have a bad ground connection. This happens all the time. Um, if I have a faulty ground uh, or a bad ground connection, maybe somebody wired something and they didn't think that it needed to be a bare ground in it, they put it on a painted surface. This, this happens all the time. Um, or let's say a rat chewed through a wire or maybe you had so much corrosion it was actually stealing. I've never seen so much corrosion where it'll actually take uh, all of the voltage. You'll, you'll see a split, it'll turn into a series circuit essentially if it's uh, corrosion. But what we're looking at here is um, if I see zero volts, it's, on, it's a ground side problem, right? Either a ground connection or a bad wire. So from there, I need to trace it out. What I like to do is I'll do a voltage test at any point that I can um, to see where there's no more voltage. If I see, oh, there's no more voltage at this point here, then uh, I know that the break is prior to that or somewhere in between where there was voltage and where there's no voltage. Hopefully that makes sense. Usually I'm standing in front of a classroom and I've got people asking questions and so it's a little bit easier to uh, address. If in fact I see a 12 volt drop, what does that mean? That means, I thought we just said that that's good, right? I thought we just said that that means everything is all good. Yes, except what that tells me is that it's not a ground side problem but it does tell me that there's voltage going in and no voltage coming out. So since I have voltage coming in, everything in the control part of the circuit is good. I don't, even, I don't need to check any of that. So really, I'm showing you all these tests, but what I wanna do as a technician, I wanna save money, right? Time is money. So if it's easy to get to, I wanna check before I do any other tests, is there voltage getting to the light bulb? And I'll do that in a moment to show you. Um, but if I've got a 12 volt drop across the light bulb and there's no light being emitted, it means it has a bad filament. Or if it's a motor that's not spinning and I'm getting a 12 volt drop across the motor, that means that the motor is open inside. Um, if that's accompanied, uh, let's say with a popped fuse, then we know it's shorted, but that's neither here nor there and there's a little bit extra steps in there because we won't have 12 volts coming in. Um, but that's a component fault. And in the relay uh, video, I told you that was commonly known as light bulb in a box, right? Um, just from the reading, you couldn't tell if the component was bad. You'd have to see um, if, the, uh, if the component itself is doing what it's supposed to be doing. But if the customer's car is in your bay and it's not working properly, then obviously um, we know which one of the two it is. It's gonna be a bad component or an open component, right? So um, let's get rid of all this ink here. We'll start a new circuit and we'll do a little bit of diagnostics um, because in your class material, I am gonna give you guys a couple of circuits and I'm gonna have you guys diagnose them uh, using the techniques that I'm showing you. So let me use black marker here, got our fuse, got our switch, in this case we're going to pretend like our switch is closed, I'm not going to do any trickery on you like, oh, the switch was open the whole time, but you should always make sure your switch is closed. Um, we'll do a light bulb here, and customer says whatever, Let maybe this is our dome light. Um, customer says that the uh, light bulb doesn't work. Okay, well, where's our first test gonna be? And is our first test gonna be available voltage? Is it gonna be voltage drop? Um, you don't have to do it exactly like I do, but here's what I always suggest. I always say, work smarter, not harder, right? That's how you're gonna make money in this industry. You can't be doing a million different tests when you could have really only done one or two to solve the problem. So a lot of times, what I like to do is to see one of two things, because they're usually the easiest to get to. I'm gonna check to make sure my fuse is good, because checking a fuse takes less than a minute, right? Pop up the fuse box, check the fuse, visual uh, check to make sure that it is in fact uh, not blown. If my fuse is good, I am going to do an available voltage test right up to my load. And here's why. This test tells me 
Is it a power side problem or is it a ground side problem or potentially a component fault? If I see 12 volts, I know it's either a component or a bad ground. If instead I see zero volts, I know that it's gonna be a power side problem. And since I've already checked the fuse, it's either gonna be the wiring or it's going to be a switch. And now I'm going to test based off of that. So let's just go ahead and say I've got a, because this one's faster because we just did it. Let's say we've got 12 volts. Easy enough. Next test, since I'm already here, is another available voltage test. If I see zero volts, my component is bad. Again, while I'm pressing the switch, if I see 12 volts going in and zero volts coming out, my component is open. Sorry, not bad, like it's naughty. It's, <laughs> it's faulty. My component is faulty, right? It is open inside, whatever the component may be. If instead I see 12 volts, it's not my component. In fact, the fact that I see 12 volts means there's a connection inside. If I see 12 volts, there's no voltage being dropped. So the problem is generally going to be a ground side problem, right? If there's junction, junctions in between, then you would test where the easy junctions to get to is. Um, and once you see no more voltage, you know that that's where the break is. So that's what we're looking at. Um, let's go back and get rid of this test. So that's if we see 12 volts. I'm gonna get rid of that completely. That's if we see 12 volts there. Let's say we don't see 12 volts there. Let's say we see zero volts there. I did already check my fuse. So what I didn't do is maybe check for voltage at the fuse. And since the fuse is always easy to get to, I like to check coming in and out of the fuse, but generally coming out of the fuse because I, if I can do one test instead of two tests, that makes my life easier. So we'll test coming out of the fuse. If I see zero volts coming out of the fuse, now I'm either running into a fuse problem, which all I need to do is check voltage coming into the fuse. If I have 12 volts coming into the fuse, then I know my fuse is bad, even though it might've looked good, which happens sometimes. If I see zero volts coming into the fuse, then I know that it is a problem in the wiring coming from the power source. And now I'm gonna to have to trace my, my diagram or chase the harness, which is usually a shorter portion of the harness from the fuse to the power source. So let's just go ahead and say we've got 12 volts coming out of the fuse, right? If I've got 12 volts coming out of the fuse, then I need, at this point, I can't be lazy anymore. I have to track down my switch. Um, which may be easy to get to or it may not be easy to get to. But at this point, if I see my switch, what I want to test is voltage coming out of the, and hopefully that's not too small, um, voltage coming out of the switch with me pressing on it. If I see 12 volts coming out of the switch, I know everything prior to the switch is good. And it's going to be wiring from my switch to my load. Maybe there's a relay in between, then I might have to test that. Um, if I see zero volts coming out of the switch, I need to test what's going in the switch. Um, so again, if I see 12 volts coming in the switch and nothing coming out and I am turning the switch on, then I know my switch is bad. Um, another common problem may be uh, if I see, maybe I see uh, five volts coming out of my switch, then that means that my switch has some serious uh, corrosion inside. Um, so that's just something to think about or a bad connection. But lots of times switches will break. So I may have 12 going in and zero coming out. Um, so at that point, that's, that's pretty much everything actually. So let's just say if I have zero volts coming in, I'm not gonna have anything coming out. There's not even any point in testing actually. If I've got zero volts coming into my switch, I know it's wiring and I know right here in the picture, it's really close. Um, but in the diagram, it might be a few feet of wiring from your fuse to the switch. So that's just something to think about. And now we need to go in and test or, or visually inspect our, our harness and see where the break is. It's your problems generally aren't going to be wiring. Sometimes they are. Um, if they are, it's usually because uh, some sort of tiny little cute fuzzy animal probably chewed through it. 
um, for whatever reason, they really, really like those. Um, or it's an aftermarket piece, or maybe it wasn't mounted properly and it was pinched and so it ended up just cutting, but a lot of times those are short first before they, they just open. Um, so those are just some common problems or things to look at. This is so important to know where voltage should be and where voltage should not be. And anywhere where I see maybe a small drop, let's say, um, one more thing, let's say, um, let's get rid of all this ink here. Let's say I tested um, and I only, let's say the customer didn't say that the bulb is not coming on. Let's say it's coming on, but instead of coming on bright, it's only coming on dim. If that's the case, I know I have a high resistance fault and I know that that high resistance is more than likely gonna be corrosion. If it was a bad or loose connection, you would have intermittent, intermittent working meaning it works sometimes, but not always. Maybe when I go over bumps, the light turns off, whatever it might be. But if the light is turning on, but it's just dim, it means I have corrosion somewhere. So that means I could have corrosion in my switch. I could have corrosion in my fuse. I can have corrosion going into my light bulb, uh, wherever that might be. At this point, we are gonna check voltages yet again. And if I see 12 all the way up to the switch and coming out of the switch, I see five volts or all the way up to right before my bulb and then right before my bulb I see two volts or five volts, whatever it might be, then I know that the corrosion is prior to that point. So I need to trace that back until I see 12 volts again. So let's say I see 12 volts coming out of my switch, but I only see five volts coming into my bulb. Then that means in this section here, I have corrosion. And now I've got to visually trace that down um, or just replace the wire if it's uh, if I'm not able to do that. So that that is what corrosion looks like. Another way corrosion can sort of manifest is um, on the ground side. In fact, more common than not, it's on the ground side because, again, our grounds are uninsulated sides of the circuit. So these are our exposed components, our exposed wiring, our exposed connections. So they are a lot more susceptible to, uh, to corrosion. So what will happen here is I will get maybe corrosion on my ground side component. So I will check what's going into my bulb. I might have 12 volts going into the bulb, but it's still dim. I'm gonna check after the bulb. If I check after the bulb, we'll say available voltage here. If I check after my bulb, if there's corrosion after, it knows, the electricity knows, uh, okay, I have more work to do, to do, so I can't use all of my pressure here, or I won't make it out the other side. I have to save some of that pressure to get through the other work, in this case, corrosion. So if I see voltage coming out of my light bulb, something that looks like maybe eight volts, or or that's actually a lot. Let's say, uh, let's say we've got four volts coming out of the bulb. That means whatever corrosion I have is using up four volts, which no wonder, now we've created a series circuit. And I will show you guys uh, in another video, hopefully um, the difference physically between series circuits and parallel circuits on the board. Um, I will see if I've got enough time to do that video. You guys have already done it in Auto 50 because uh, they're, they're electro trainer boards that um, you guys built series circuits and parallel circuits, so you should know the difference. Um, but what we did is we essentially added another load in series. So remember that whole talk, it's like having another kid. So my paycheck didn't change, but now I've got two mouths to feed. That's what's happening here um, on accident because that corrosion is happening. So what you need to do is clean up that corrosion or replace that component in order to get rid of that voltage drop. So your, your uh, load can get all the voltage it's supposed to have. So there's your basic diagnosis, um, what a burnt light bulb would look like, what a bad ground would look like, what, um, what uh, the switch looks like open or closed, right? So um, my switch will drop all 12 volts if it's open, but it should drop zero volts if it's closed. And we know what it looks like when there's corrosion inside the switch, right? It's actually using up some voltage. So if I did a voltage drop across, I, mean, I think I actually already drew it, Let's say I have a five volt drop and a voltage drop test across my switch, I know that I've got corrosion in my switch. So those are just some things that um, 
you may run into. So what I'm gonna do, um, since I showed you guys all of the available voltage tests and voltage drop, I was actually gonna break that up into two videos. I ended up just running right through it. So now we're at, what, 25 minutes. Um, I am gonna do one more video on wiring diagrams and I'll show you guys some tricks on what I like to do um, because it makes it a whole lot easier on your brain. So if you have any questions, please post them on the discussion board and I will do help you guys the best I possibly can. Um, hopefully this online platform is not too painful I'm trying to do the best I possibly can to help you guys out with this. So uh, again, let me know if you have any questions. Thanks guys.